In this episode in the series about the 1969 Melbourne Transportation Plan, we are going to look at the F6. This was one of the longest proposed freeways, stretching a massive 91 kilometres between Thomastown in the north and Safety Beach in the south. Because it's so big, there are three parts to it that we'll cover individually. So let's take a look at the F6, one of Melbourne's forgotten freeways. The first part is from the northern terminus at what was called the F5 in Thomastown. Today we call it the M80 Ring Road, right down to the F19 in Kew, which today we call the Eastern Freeway. South of Reservoir, the F6 would have utilised the land along Darabin Creek, as well as at least some of the land previously earmarked for the proposed Alfington to East Preston Railway. See the link in the video description to a post on my website if you're interested in learning more about this. But basically, there were lots of properties reserved for this railway in the 1940s and 50s, which would have then been used for the F6 instead, as the railway was cancelled just 10 years earlier in 1959. Had this part of the F6 been built, it's probable that this would instead look something like the Mooney Ponds Creek does today. Following the construction of the F14, today known as CityLink and the Tullamarine Freeway, much of the Mooney Ponds Creek Corridor was paved in concrete to accommodate the large road structures and associated infrastructure. As a result, the creek itself was turned into essentially a series of concrete drains. Some of this has actually been reversed now, with the recently announced Reimagining Your Mooney Ponds Creek project led by Melbourne Water. The reason I mention this is because it's likely that this is what would have happened to the Darabin Creek as well. Planning on this part north of the Eastern Freeway never really saw much progress, probably due to the difficulties and expense of building in a narrow and windy parcel of land like a creek. But if you look closely at property boundaries along the proposed route, you can still see some traces of where the road may have gone. The route of the F6 around the Yarra River changed over time as plans developed. The original planning scheme reservation from the 1950s and 60s had the freeway do a sharp turn at the end of Darabin Creek in order to meet the Chandler Highway and the proposed F19 Eastern Freeway. But the 1969 plan seems to have changed the route and the F6 would not have run along the Chandler Highway at all, contrary to popular belief. Instead, it was proposed to be built a bit further east where the Darabin Yarra Link shared path is located today. Over time, and after the cancellation of the original F6 alignment along Darabin Creek, the focus of the route shifted westwards towards the Chandler Highway. This was at least partly to connect to a new north-south route of major arterial roads through Kew, Alfington and Preston. As a result of this, the only other trace of this northern section that remains today is the huge interchange between the F19, today called the Eastern Freeway, and the Chandler Highway in Kew. This was part of the revised theoretical alignment, so when the Eastern Freeway was built in the 1970s, the interchange was future-proofed for a future connection into the F6. I've done a separate video on this, so if you're interested in watching it, there is a link here in the top right-hand corner and in the video description below. Now let's move on to part two. This middle section is from the Eastern Freeway down to Gardiners Creek in Glen Iris. It was to mostly follow the alignment of the former Outer Circle Railway line. From the Eastern Freeway near Kilby Road in East Kew, the F6 would have followed the rail reservation through Baldwin, Canterbury and Camberwell. Once it reached the Belgrave Lilydale Railway line, the road would have also intersected with a proposed new arterial road that would have run east-west through the centre of Burundara, roughly along the alignment of Canterbury Road and through to Box Hill. Heading further south, the F6 would have diverged from the alignment of the Outer Circle, presumably because the Alamein line was still in operation. From here, it's a bit unclear how exactly the freeway would have continued south to its intersection with the F14 at Gardiners Creek, what is today the Monash Freeway. As you can see on this map is superimposing the 1969 plan over a present day street layout, the F6 would have demolished large parts of Camberwell if it was built at surface level. I haven't been able to find any documentation to back this up, but my theory is that this part would have been in a tunnel, especially given the topography of the area. The final thing to note about this middle section is that the F6 was originally considered to be a connecting route between the F9 and F14 freeways. I'll cover this in more detail in another video, 
but what we know today as CityLink and the Monash Freeway was not originally planned in this way. It would have actually been two separate sections along slightly different alignments, as you can see in this proposed network map. If you want to be technical about it, you can argue that this part of the F6 was in fact built as part of the revised alignment for CityLink. South of here from East Malvern, we'll now consider the final part of the F6 all the way down to the Mornington Peninsula. Continuing south, the interchange between the F6 and the F14 would have been just east of East Malvern Station. The alignment rejoins the former Outer Circle Railway land and would have gone south along what is today the Urban Forest and Boyd Park. It then would have run parallel to Warrigal Road, roughly following Poweth Road and Mackey Road, through the Yarra Yarra Golf Club, before heading through the residential area just west of Moorabbin Airport to interchange with the Nepean Highway. Here it would have intersected with the present day Wells Road and the beginning of the Mornington Peninsula Freeway at Springvale Road. The Mordialloc Freeway, which is currently under construction, fulfills basically the same function as the original F6, but just along a slightly different alignment to the east instead of the west of Moorabbin Airport. What we today call the Dingley Bypass and the Westall Road Extension was actually designated as the F2 in the 1969 plan, with the F6 providing a connection between this and the freeway further down the Mornington Peninsula. The Mordialloc Freeway does the same thing, but just further east a change that appears to have been made in the 1981 Metropolitan Implementation Strategy Report. Further south of Springvale Road, this is where the F6 has actually been constructed, again just under different names. The freeway route today is designated the M11 and goes under the names of Mornington Peninsula Freeway and Peninsula Link. The F6 was formally axed in 1973, but the road reservations and plans quietly remained in the planning scheme and road engineering documents well into the 1980s. As we've seen, and as with most freeways and roads in the 1969 plan, parts of the F6 have been built since, just under different names. And in a rare occasion of a freeway being built even beyond what was proposed in the 1969 plan, the M11 now extends all the way to Rosebud, with proposals for it to go even further to Blairgarry, which is much further than its original proposed terminus at Safety Beach. That brings us to the end of this video in the series about proposed freeways in the 1969 Melbourne Transportation Plan. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this so that you can stay up to date on the latest videos and continue to support this channel. As always, check out the video description for more information and see the playlist linked up here for more in the series. Otherwise, you can also visit my website at philipmalice.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.